So we went to the home to see who was living there. Miss, uh, you bought this home for $100. Is that true? I paid 75 and I got the deed and everything signed from Orange County. Welcome to my channel, Clark the Realtor. Don't forget to subscribe and let's get started. What's going on, y'all? Devon Clark here, National Realtor. Today, we are going to talk about the topic of squatters. Again, if you guys don't know, squatting has become an epidemic that is not only plaguing the nation of America, but also the world in general. So let's check out a couple videos in regards to what's happening around the world when it comes to people squatting on other people's properties. But not only that, let's actually dive into something that is called an intruder warrant. So I'm not sure if you guys have this in your state, but where I currently live, they have a warrant called an intruder warrant. So we're gonna dive into these videos, then we're gonna dive into this warrant. Hopefully this warrant can help you out in the state that you're from, whether it be the city or the county that you live in currently, if you're a homeowner or an investor. Let's get into it. Fox 35 investigates a woman who planned on spending her golden years in Orlando, finds out strangers are living in the home that she owns. <laughs> what a shock, right? Fox 35 <laughs> investigated this case and found out this is happening more than you might realize. Fox 35's Dave Puglisi shows you how to protect yourself. I just and I just give my blood to America. They don't do nothing themselves. Marie Persum always planned on retiring from Boston to Orlando more than 20 years ago. She bought this home on Wolf Road. For years, she's lived in the home on and off, but the pandemic kept her in Boston for the past three years. Imagine her shock when she showed up and found strangers living here, claiming. So in this situation, she is considered an absentee owner. So if you guys don't know what an absentee owner is, uh, on the real estate side, we call an absentee owner, someone who doesn't occupy the property currently. So you could, that could be an investor who bought a home and they don't occupy the property. They might never occupy the property and they're renting it out to other uh, tenants. Or an absentee owner can be such like her where she bought a property in a different state, but she lives in another state. She doesn't rent it out. She just goes back and forth. That might be a summer vacation house, something that she's hopefully um, aspiring to transfer to when she gets out of living in this current house into another house, but she's not there currently. Or maybe absentee owner can be somebody that's possibly doing an Airbnb, things like that. They buy the property, but they don't frequently stay in the property. And, uh, and it can also occur to say if a family member or somebody that lived in the house passed away and you as a, a person that is inheriting said property can turn around and still pay the taxes, the mortgage, any HOA fees, whatever is doing the property, depending on where you're, uh, where this property is situated at, you might be in a different state paying this, but you're considered an absentee owner. Either, even though you still own the house, you are not in the house. So that's considered, like I said, an absentee owner. So it's always smart if you're not in the house and if you don't have a tenant currently occupying the house to either get a, a good realtor, a good management company or a security system to kind of keep freak, a frequent eye on your property. So no one's just coming in there and just taking over the property. And by the time you get back, you're like, what's happening? Somebody is squatting in my property. Let's get back into the video. And they're the owners now. I don't have a house for sale. I don't have a house to give away. I just want my house back. Marie's son called Fox 35. His mother is now living in a hotel, even though she's been paying the mortgage and utilities on this house. That's over $1,000 a month. The security company, the electrical, you have all these different utilities, internet, paying monthly. So Fox 35 started investigating. The Orange County property appraiser website shows Marie bought the home in July of 2001. But look closely. It also says that she sold the property in January of 2019 for just $100. It was sold using a quick claim deed. Marie says she never signed off on that transaction. Unlike a regular warranty deed or statutory warranty deed, so if you guys don't understand what a quick claim deed is, typically a quick claim deed is transferred to someone that is close to you, uh, assumingly a family member. So it might be, let's say my dad has a property and he wants to give it over to me without having gone through this whole process of transferring said deed. He would consider, he would do a quick claim deed, have me sign something real quick, maybe say that I paid him a dollar or whatever, depending on what the amount you want to pay. And then that, that deed, basically transfers over into my name. I believe she's going to explain a little bit. A quick claim deed is something that you can quickly transfer over to another said family member in regards to transferring property. Let's get back into it. Uh, or the other deeds, it provides no warranties or any type of guarantees of title. 
And so it's just kind of an as is transfer. Attorneys at legal counsel in Winter Garden say quick claim deeds are typically used to easily transfer property between family members. They do not require formal title reviews, which means the ownership of the property can be changed without a formal verification. Sometimes the signatures can even be done electronically. So experts say someone can easily forge your signature and the witnesses. In Marie's case, experts say the suspects likely noticed no one was in the house for a couple years and took advantage. The fraud is in the subsequent sale and the scamming of a subsequent buyer. Uh, the, the original owner has a remedy available to them. They simply you know, file affidavits and testify on the road. That's not my signature and uh, it should be. So in this situation, like I said, we're going to get later on into this thing called an intruder warrant. Uh, again, I'm not legal. I'm just a realtor. So I'm not sure in this case because everything had been transferred per se via electronically online, quick claim deed and everything. I believe the woman does get the squatters out at the end of this video. But in regards to this, I would ask, I would tell you guys to seek legal counsel to see how you can properly do this because with an intruder warrant, I believe it has to be something where uh, there is no type of lease in place or any type of structure that says you're uh, renting out the place or you're the owner of said property. In this situation, I'm not sure. Again, I would tell you guys to uh, advise legal counsel. I am a realtor, so I'm just basically diving into these videos to tell you guys about squatter, squatter law situations that are happening. Um, but uh, let's dive back into this video. Be able to do it. It's the subsequent buyers that are probably going to be the real victims of the fraud. Orange County's Economic Crimes Unit is investigated. This 42-page report shows the deed in question. Marie says she doesn't know the person whose name is on the deed or the two witnesses who signed it. So we went to the home to see who was living there. Miss, uh, you bought this home for $100. Is that true? I paid 75 and I got the deed and everything signed from Orange County. Miss, I, I looked on Orange County. You see how she is so irate, like, He's like, it says that you paid a hundred dollars. She's like, I paid seventy five dollars again. With with a quit claim deed, you guys can pay whatever you want to to set to uh, facilitate that transfer. Like I said, it can be as low as a dollar if you want to. Um, so in this situation, she's saying that she got a transfer. He said it was a hundred dollars. That that's what he saw in the documents. And she was like, no, it's seventy five. So it's just the audacity of someone who doesn't own a home, a squatter, to tell you like, well, this is what I got, and she cursing them out and everything. It's just so crazy that these squatters out here, they are saying to themselves like, I own this home or I'm renting this home. I have legal documentation. I have I have uh, leases in place. And it's just crazy to me that you have to go through a whole process, unfortunately, in America. And it might be all over the world, but I can just speak about America and the particular state I'm in. You have to go through a process in which you have to formally evict these people out your home. And that's the reason why later on down the line, I'm, I'm going to get into this whole in whole intruders warrant and possibly it could be something that might save you time in regards to evicting these squatters out of your home let's get back into it you guys daddy it says a hundred dollars so what'd you think your report don't have can you just check see how you bought the home that's all you want to see my d yeah i'm gonna hit you in the face if you come up with a camera since our visit, Marie says the people have left the home and left behind a big mess. Take a look at these pictures of the damage. Marie and her son say the home is unlivable and they don't know what's next. We basically don't. And that's the problem too with squatters, right? When you, after you finally evict them, they can damage the home as well. So just say, if you thought you were about to go into this property, set up shop as far as moving your things in and just being able to continue on with the life that you were already currently living outside of this whole squatter situation. Now you have, once you get the property back, now you have to go in there and fix things up. Cause typically if they are pushed out the house unwarranted or um, they tend to destroy things, they tend to put holes in walls, do anything to try to wreck the property because they're, they're mad. So because of them being mad, they're like, well, I'm just going to destroy this and I'm going to leave out of the property and you're going to have to fix these damages. So now when you go back in there as, as an owner of the property, you have to now fix up things that you were not trying to fix up. So even if you did try to say, let's say you don't want to fix up these things, you're like, you know what? I'm just tired of this. I don't want to have this property no more. I want to sell it. Now, because of those damages, damages in the house, if you don't fix them, you're selling the property as is, which makes your property lower in value now when you try to sell it on the, on the, uh, on the market. Let's get back into the video, you guys. 
donated in a way to somebody else. So how do you prevent something like this from happening to you? Sign up for property fraud alerts on your county clerk of court's website. It will alert you if anyone tries to file property documents of your land or in your name. Dave. So like they say, you can sign up for county property reports on your website, on your local county's website. I don't know if every county has that particular um, type of thing that you can sign up for, but I would definitely say reach out to your local county and see if they have anything in regards to alerting you guys when someone tries to transfer over any deeds or documents from your name to their name, just so you can stay up on that. It's similar to like, say, if you were to go to uh, someone was to use your debit card or your credit card, you would get an alert on um, from those particular uh, from your bank or from your credit card card holder telling you basically someone had tried to use your um, card. So nonetheless, let's get into this next video in regards to what's continuously happening in, in the face of squatters. New at 6 South Fulton, landlords going after squatters. And only Channel 2 Action News was with the city of South Fulton Police and the Fulton County Sheriff's Office as they executed intruder warrants. City leaders said that they have some of the highest numbers of squatters in the metro area. Investigative reporter Ashley Lincoln now live in South Fulton. And Ashley, you found out why there are so many squatters. So many because landlords are having a hard time getting squatters out of their properties. You can see all of this that was taken out of this home right behind me. The city says they're seeing a combination of both more people squatting along with landlords learning about this specific warrant that will get squatters out quicker. <laughs> Tuesday, Fulton County Sheriff's deputies executed the first of several intruder warrants where individuals have either illegally moved in or stopped paying rent and haven't moved out. This is illegal. As you guys heard, the warrant is called an intruder warrant, like I stated before. And let's dive back into this video. And then we're actually going to read an article in regards to another squatter situation. Then we're going to dive into that intruder's warrant. Okay, so let's get back into this video legal and it causes havoc in communities post covid era um there's been a lot of squatters and channel two was there exclusively when fulton county sheriff's deputies executed the first two of 16 properties it says since covid there has been like he said an uptick of squatters and i believe the case of this is because inflation a lot of people cannot afford to live in these high rents a lot of people do not make that much income. And then also just to qualify for renting nowadays, depending on where you're at, where I'm at currently in Georgia, you have to make three times a monthly income. And depending on what management company or who uh, you decide to rent from, it might be three times your gross income, three times your net income. So some people don't even make three times the income. If the rent is $1,400 times that by three, what's that about? But $4,200, I believe $4,200 a month that you have to bring in. And if you're working a, a regular job and you're one person, and you're trying to survive with kids, you, you're not bringing in that income monthly. So it's no excuse in regards to people squatting on people's properties. But we also have to adjust the way in which people are um, kind, of, kind of evaluated to, to get a lease and also to be able to occupy a property as a tenant nowadays, right? I'm not sure, and I could be wrong, but I'm not sure most of America is making three times monthly income. Okay, so let's dive back into the video. City of South Fulton Councilwoman Helen Willis says it's an increasing problem in their city. I get a call every week uh, from residents that live within my district complaining. So much so, deputized city of South Fulton police officers are training under Fulton County deputies, learning how to execute intruder warrants. The process with intruder warrants actually starts with the landlord. After knocking at the first house, a family of seven walked out. The adults told me off camera they just paid the landlord. According to the city, the property owner had not been paid in nearly a year. Squatting is not a solution to affordable housing. The county says intruder warrants only take a few weeks to execute, while evictions can take a few months. However, the difference between it and an eviction is the fact that an intruder does not have a landlord-tenant relationship. Captain Phillips says landlords needing an intruder warrant must get a notarized affidavit of service and filing it with the sheriff's office's civil processing unit. The person in the house does have an opportunity to say their piece and to get determined in court. However, if they do not, at that time, the intruder would be ejected. 
At the second property, workers had to drill open the door when no one responded. A neighbor who didn't want to be identified said police were constantly being called to this home. Since the, the real owner moved out, it's been a lot of people in and out. There's an Airbnb. I didn't like that. And the city says the remaining 14 warrants will be executed in the upcoming weeks. Now the sheriff. So as you guys heard, there is a, also a protocol with an intruder warrant, but it is likely that if you have an intruder warrant over an, an eviction, it can take, it can be a quicker process. Again, this is currently in the state of Georgia and also in the county of South Fulton. They have this, um, they're executing these intruder warrants to get squatters out of properties. So now let's kind of dive into this other article I found, which I find very interesting. It's about squatters again in Georgia, but and how the neighbors were constantly complaining about these squatters, but yet the cops didn't do anything until they found a car and a car parked on their property that had um, license plates, basically that didn't belong to them, I believe. And then once they did that, and then they found out all these other things happening in the house that the neighbors kept complaining about. And then on top of that, they found out that these people were also squatters. So it, it's kind of, it's crazy, you guys. It's really crazy, but a lot of squatting situations are happening. So let's dive into this article right now as well. All right, guys, so let's dive into this article in regards to squatters as well in the South Fulton, Georgia area, like I stated earlier. And we're just going to read through it real quick. We're just going to skim through it. But this is in regards to these four men that were squatting on the property and the situ and the different things that had they had going on in the house at the time. And the police didn't make their way over there until they found, like I said, a license plate on the car that didn't belong to them, which is crazy to me. So it says right here, in an Atlanta, in, in an Atlanta housing community, authorities arrested four men who were occupying a home without permission and running an illegal strip club operation, you guys, within the premises a strip club operation <laughs> this is wild like these people are squatters and they're like i don't care if i'm a squatter or not i'm gonna do whatever i want to do and it's just the audacity of people like right in front of your eyes they don't care and they're like well who's gonna check who gonna make me move out of here it says on sunday a swat off a group of swat officers uh entered a house i'm just reading through it real quick you guys and the cell phone a Georgia area and detained four men who were residing there unlawfully. Like it says, according to the residents interviewed by WSB TV, people next door were dubbed the worst neighbors ever due to their reported weekend strip club operation, reckless street racing on residential roads, and occasional sight of live horses strolling their yard. What is going on, y'all? These people, you are squatters on a property. And you are like, well, shoot, I'm about to live my best life. I'm going to do a strip club operation on the weekends. I'm going to speed race down the street. You don't even belong in this property. And then on top of that, I'm going to have live horses in the yard, y'all. A lot of partying. They had an illegal strip club on the weekends. One neighbor told the local news station they were they would get live horses. One day they had live horses. Another neighbor said the local news outlet WSB TV reported that the squatters living in the dilapidated property had been a source of regular complaints from the neighbors. Yet no actions were taken until recent Sunday when a SWAT team carried out a raid. So the neighbors were complaining like these are squatters. These are squatters. These people do not live in this property. And they had all this stuff going on, like the audacity of people nowadays. Like they, when they tell you people will do it right in front of your eyes and they're like, who cares? Because no one... Like they, the neighbors were calling police constantly. And so this is another situation like on the other end where you have people that are in your neighborhood that are literally looking out for the best interest of your property. They're calling police because they're like, hey, squatters are taking over his property, X, Y, and Z. And sometimes the police won't come. Sometimes it would actually take you as the owner of said property to call the police because if the neighbor calls, sometimes they won't come. Sometimes they will, but in all cases, every police force is not coming out because a neighbor called and they're like, well, if I call you, they're like, well, in their mind, they might be thinking, well, this ain't your home, so who cares? You know, even though we shouldn't think like that because we have neighborhood watch, but that's how it works sometimes. So it's like the opposite end of everything, too, right? You have this uh, uh, squatter videos I showed you earlier in regards to the police being present and being there and taking care of stuff. And then you have this situation where neighbors are calling for the police to come and they don't come. And then finally, you know, and, and they finally did come, but after so many complaints and incidents, and, and the reason why they came is crazy. So let's listen up. It says, the police stated that the SWAT team operation resulted in the arrest of four individuals residing in the house. The motive of the raid was due to a stolen vehicle 
that was detected on the property by a license plate reader. So it had nothing to do with the neighbors calling in regards to squatters living in the property. It had everything to do where it says the police, the motive right here, the motive of the raid was due to a stolen vehicle that was detected on the property by a license plate reader. So if they didn't detect the license plate, the, the, the car being stolen per se, or the license plate, whatever being stolen, they wouldn't have came even though people constantly said, hey, they're squatters, they're squatters. Upon investigation, the authorities uncovered an array of stolen items, including a firearm, two stolen cars, various forms of identification, and several credit cards that have been unlawfully obtained and used. But let me know what's happening and where you're from in regards to squatting and uh, what's happening in your neighborhood. Are you seeing an influx of squatters coming into your neighborhood, squatting in homes that are absentee owner homes, so investor property owns homes, things like that? So let's kind of jump into this article in regards to an intruder warrant so you guys can see what that is all right and i also want to say this is not bashing the police they are doing a wonderful job but i'm just saying in that last article that i find found it very ironic that people were complaining about squatters and we've been having this uptick of so many squatters taking over properties for them not to come until they saw a license plate that read that it was from another person which is crazy to me anyway so uh, there's nothing against our law enforcement i appreciate them thank you guys for working hard to kind of resolve this issue so let's get into this as i got as i told you guys they have a thing called an intruder warrant i'm not sure how it works and where you're from or in your state i would definitely go down to your local courthouse or your local um I guess you could say City Hall. I'm not sure where you guys would go to kind of pick this information up, but I would think more likely the courthouse and ask them in regards to does the county have an intruder warrant? And if so, how to go about getting that warrant issued if you have squatters living in your property. So let's read a little bit of this intruder warrant. So in the state of Georgia, this is 2022. So they haven't updated it since, but it's still the same thing. It's a uh, Georgia code title 44 property chapter property chapter 11 ejectment and proceedings against intruders and then they have article 2 proceedings against intruders so if you were in georgia and you wanted to understand more about it you would click right here where it says manner of ejecting intruders affidavit ejection by sheriff and counter affidavit all right so you are going to get an affidavit to do so uh to eject these intruders so it says right here the code is 44-1130, manner of ejecting intruders, affidavit, ejection by sheriff, and counter affidavit. So again, as you guys heard in the video, these intruders or quote unquote squatters still can uh, basically counter against the, uh, the ejection. But nine times out of 10, they'll most likely lose the injection if they can't um, produce any papers or documents that show that they're lawfully supposed to be there. So let's read through it real quick. It says, when, it, with, when any person, either by himself, his agent, or his attorney, in fact, shall take and subscribe an affidavit in the right and writing before any officer, before any officer, sorry, authorized to administer an oath setting forth that he claims in good faith the right of possession to to the described land or tenement, and that such land or tenement is in the hands of another person who does not in good faith claim a right to such possession and yet refuses to abandon the same to abandon the same it shall be the duty of the sheriff of the county or the land of the tenant where the land or the tenement is located upon receiving such affidavit to exhibit such affidavit to person described as being in possession of such land or tenement at the earliest and possible day and to turn such person out of possession unless the person and the possession tenders to the sheriff a counter affidavit stating that he claims in good faith a legal right to the possession of the land or tenement. Hey, check that out. If you are a homeowner dealing with squatters currently on your property, if you're an investor dealing with squatters currently on your property, it is called an intruder uh, warrant or you can and then it's also in the state of Georgia this intruder warrant comes with an affidavit that you have to go and I believe get notarized as well so anyway hopefully this information helped you guys and I just wanted to jump on here today and talk more about squatters people have been asking me to do a video around squatters some more videos around squatters and hopefully it can help you too if you currently have intruders in your home so um check this out go down to your local courthouse and see if you guys have a intruder's warrant and see how to go about using it correctly in the state that you live in and also the city and the county because every city, county is different, you guys, when it comes to real estate. 
All right. All right. So that's all we got today about squatters. If you guys have any more questions or need advice from myself, my name is Devon Clark. I am a national licensed realtor. I help people buy and sell in the state of Georgia, but I can also refer you to other realtors local to your state and also your city and your county. So reach out to me if you are looking to buy or sell property, or even if you're an investor that you currently have squatters at and you need some information of how to go about properly trying to get them out of that property, you can reach out to me. My email is below. And if you are currently dealing with situations like this, like I said before, put it below. And if you have successfully gotten squatters out of your property, please put that information below so we can help other people out. The premise of me doing this video is for you guys to continuously fill those comments up so that going forward, if someone finds this video and they live in the same state you live in and they see how you went about getting squatters out of your property and all those things, they can then follow the same thing or hit you up as a resource to be able to do the same. All right, again, my name is Devon Clark. If you need any advice from me or any more information in regards to real estate, hit my email below and, and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.